The film shows a little boy born under humble beginnings during the days before Castro came to power in Cuba. His teacher commended him for his exceptional aptitude for poetry. His grandfather at home didn't take too kindly to hearing this news. He clamped down on little Ronaldo Arenas and smacked him around to knock some sense into him. These events would each prove pivotal for Reynaldo's future. The more he pours his energy and his passion into his poetry and writing, the more that everyone tries to discourage him. As if that weren't enough, the boy also realizes he's gay. When the revolution was underway, Reynaldo gave every ounce of his effort to further it. Then, when Castro came to power, he threw Reynaldo under the bus demonstrating vile homophobia and stern attitude toward artists. After being rejected by society and serving seven years in Cuban prison, in 1980, he joined refugees setting off by boat to New York, consisting of societal outcasts, homosexuals, the insane, the criminals, and other undesirables in the country. Fast forward over a decade, facing the jaws of death at the hands of AIDS, he decided to take his own life by swallowing excess pills and suffocating himself with a plastic I love NY bag, just to guarantee the deed was done. The film tells the man's story using the same language used in his writings coupled with Julian Schnabel's creative imagery. Schnabel artistically tells the boy's story with a series of dreams, a number of Reynaldo's moments as a child, and the harsh reality of Cuba at the time he lived there, leaving no room for anybody to stand out. In perhaps the most troublesome part, Arenas comes across a makeshift hot air balloon escape project a group of wannabe runaways had put together in an old church, desperately hoping it'd float them to the United States. Their balloon takes off and the plan proves a tragic disaster. One can only speculate as to whether this was an actual historical event. I would presume that it was. This is now two movies that Schnabel has made, each of which concerning an artist rejected by society with a hardened, impulsive personality. Indeed, in the movie Basquiat from 1996, New Yorker Jean-Michel Basquiat graffiti art took him from living on the streets to the status of a celebrity before eventually going insane. Arenas' journey is not much different. In the case of both protagonists, art is a jubilant escape and release. Basquiat has an Achilles heel in the form of drugs, while for Arenas, it's an extreme amount of sex. In both of these cases, these destructive habits result in degeneracy, sorrow, and tragedy. Reynaldo reports having had 5,000 male sexual partners before he turned 25. Such a past does not tell the story of a man who did it because he enjoyed it. On the contrary, the actor playing the role of Arenas is Spain's Javier Bardem, a man particularly gifted in acting as a straight tough guy. Hamon, Hamon being a spectacular example. Arenas feels a bit unnatural as a gay man, as if that's not something the protagonist actually was. We go along with it and take his word that the character is homosexual. After all, homosexuals come with all temperaments, tics, and personalities. Nevertheless, it also seems as if Arenas deliberately chose the homosexual lifestyle as an additional means of opposing Castro's tyrannical wishes. There are two other gay characters in the movie, which are more believable homosexuals. Johnny Depp playing the role of both Lieutenant Victor, a military commander, and Bon Bon, a transvestite who Arenas counted his lucky stars was about to sneak out of one of Arenas' works by hiding it in the most comfortable of places. Crazy as it is, the plan worked. A double-sided sword for Arenas in his blunt determination. A little bit of deception and trickery would have gotten Arenas a long way. After all, Arenas could have avoided a lot of trouble by withholding some unnecessary information. He made his situation as a homosexual a lot harder than he needed to. One such example was Diego in the 1995 film Strawberry and Chocolate. Created by Cuban director Gutierrez Alea and set in 1979, an outwardly gay man does as he pleases since he has the forethought to make sure it doesn't come out. Thus, the iron fist doesn't slam down on him. 
It appears that Arenas in a way seeks out his own suffering. He makes no efforts to minimize his suffering and seems to take pride in his status as a martyr. He chooses to sacrifice his own well-being out of principle. However, this steadfastness is portrayed as a positive trait in the movie. Rather than being shown as the typical persecuted homosexual under an authoritarian regime, Arenas is portrayed as someone seemingly born with the destiny of being unhappy regardless of the political regime. This conflict between the protagonist and the rest of his country was what propelled him to write and create poetry in the first place. As an outcast, he wrote to voice his displeasure and his pain motivated him to create. This brings back memories of Marquis de Sade in Quills. The content of their writing wasn't necessarily the point. Rather, it was the act of thus defying totalitarianism and barreling through horrible persecution that stood out.